It is a solemn thing to ponder eternity, the irrevocable sentence of a life fully lived. What becomes of those who wield great power yet reject their Maker? Good day, beloved brothers and sisters. Today, I bring to you a vision, a haunting revelation delivered by Father Jim Blunt. In it, we see Edward VII, once a king adorned in the finest garments of England's royal house, now engulfed in the flames of eternal damnation. His earthly sins, veiled in charm and elegance, have become the very chains that bind him to the abyss. This is a story, not only of judgment but of warning, an alarm to any who think power, fame, or pleasure might shield them from the consequences of unrepentant sin. In the quiet solitude of his devotions, Father Blunt saw the fate of King Edward VII, a figure of grandiosity and excess who now faces punishment beyond human comprehension. What Father Blunt witnessed is not merely a tragic end but a prophecy, a warning to all who, like Edward, wear the crown of life with disdain for God's commands. This vision is not a fabrication but a spiritual insight, a window into the price paid for pride and vanity. For it is written, The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Romans 6 verse 23 Yet, for Edward VII, whose life bore the marks of defiance, there was no repentance, and thus no mercy. Edward VII, son of Queen Victoria, ascended to the British throne in 1901. Charismatic and full of charm, he was adored by many and feared by some, wielding his influence over England and Europe. However, behind the royal veneer lay a man whose life was marred by excess, indulgence, and the constant pursuit of sensual pleasure. He cavorted with mistresses, and his appetites for gambling and luxury were insatiable, leaving behind a trail of debts and scandals. Edward's court became synonymous with decadence, a place where morals were negotiable and virtues dismissed as relics of the past. But more grievous than these earthly sins was Edward's cold stance towards the church and the pope. He maintained a distant, often dismissive attitude toward the Vatican, preferring worldly allies over divine counsel. Though king over an empire that once professed the Christian faith, Edward's allegiance lay elsewhere. This betrayal is not minor in the eyes of heaven, for he did not merely sin as a man but led an entire people into moral apathy. For it is written in the book of Proverbs, when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked beareth rule, the people mourn, Proverbs 29 verse 2. England's moral compass was in decline, reflecting the very corruption of its monarch. In Father Blunt's vision, Edward was seen in a place that no throne could lift him from, a realm of searing fire and relentless torment. Gone was the regal attire, the crown, and the splendor. Stripped of all earthly majesty, he stood in utter despair. The flames that licked his form did not consume him, yet their agony was unceasing. There, in the bowels of hell, he saw with horrifying clarity the true price of his life's choices. Edward's punishment was not arbitrary. It was specific, a direct consequence of his sins. His unbridled lust was met with an unspeakable thirst, a dryness that cracked his very soul. Yet there was no satisfaction to be found. In his earthly life, he had drunk deeply from the cups of pleasure and sin. Yet now he faced an eternal thirst that would never be quenched. This is the nature of hell. Each sin is repaid in full, the soul's rebellion mirrored in its punishment. For his dismissive attitude toward the Holy Church, he was surrounded by spectral visions of the saints, holy figures he had shunned and mocked in life. Their presence was no comfort. Instead, it was a bitter reminder of the grace he had refused. They stood solemnly around him, their faces serene yet distant, embodying the mercy he had dismissed with scorn. One by one, they turned away, casting their holy gaze upon another, for he was beyond redemption. He had, in life, preferred the company of sycophants over saints, basking in the shallow flattery of the unworthy. Now, in the shadows of hell, 
he bore the heavy weight of his prideful choices, left utterly alone in the midst of those he had spurned. The vision of Edward VII in hell is a warning to all who hear it. Though this fate was his alone, it is a fate shared by many who, through pride or apathy, refuse to heed the laws of God. Edward's life stands as a cautionary tale, showing that even the mightiest among us are not immune from judgment. His punishment is a chilling reminder that wealth, power, and beauty cannot buy eternal peace. For what does it profit a man to gain the whole world, yet forfeit his soul? Mark 8 verse 36 Edward gained kingdoms but lost his soul, and in so doing, he found the full measure of hell's wrath. This is not a mere tale of historical curiosity but a prophetic reminder to our own generation. In a world where moral decay and indulgence are often celebrated, we must heed the example of Edward VII. His life is a mirror, reflecting our own tendencies toward excess, pride, and spiritual neglect. Are we not also guilty of dismissing the Church's guidance in favor of worldly wisdom? Do we not prioritize personal pleasure over divine obedience? In seeing Edward's fate, we are called to repentance. For if such a fate could befall a king, how much more should we tremble? The vision of Edward VII's punishment in hell is meant to stir us from complacency. This is not a distant, abstract judgment. It is imminent, and it applies to us all. We do not have the luxury of time to delay repentance, for the end comes as swiftly as a thief in the night. Edward once sat on a throne, secure and unchallenged, yet his time ended, and he met his fate unprepared. Today, many live as if they will never face judgment, yet the truth is that death spares no one. The message of Edward's torment is clear. Repent now, while there is still time. Do not let pride, vanity, or apathy keep you from the embrace of God's mercy. Hell is real, and its fires are not reserved for the poor or the weak, but for all who turn away from God. Edward VII was given a life of privilege and influence, but squandered it on sin. His fate now serves as a beacon of warning, a lighthouse in the storm of modern life, guiding us away from the rocks of damnation. In witnessing Edward's plight, we are given a choice. We can follow in his footsteps, chasing after the fleeting pleasures of this world, or we can humble ourselves, turn to God, and embrace the path of righteousness. The stakes are as high as they can be, for eternity itself hangs in the balance. Father Blunt's vision is a gift, a final alarm ringing out for those who still have time to change. This message is not for Edward alone. It is for every soul still treading the earth, still choosing between the fleeting treasures of earth and the eternal treasures of heaven. Let us not be deceived. Hell is real, and it awaits those who reject the light of Christ. Today we have the chance to repent, to change, to seek God's mercy. Let Edward's torment drive us to our knees, that we might avoid the flames that now consume him. For as the scriptures remind us, it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. May we heed this warning, turn from our sins, and strive for the life that leads, not to fire and torment, but to the eternal kingdom of peace and joy.